Have you been recently diagnosed with celiac disease or suspect that you might have it? If so, then stick around. This video is for you. I will be covering what celiac disease is, common symptoms, common consequences and health concerns, as well as how to treat it. Welcome to my channel. I'm Holly of Renewal Fitness and Nutrition Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian, holistic nutritionist and personal trainer, and I help women to lose weight and renew their gut health with natural and holistic means. So what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition that causes your body to react when you consume the protein gluten. What happens in celiac is that your small intestines over time become damaged from consuming gluten. And so the villi, which are inside of your small intestine, become shortened and damaged and are unable to absorb nutrients in the same way as a healthy intestine. So one of the main concerns with this, besides the uncomfortable symptoms, is that it can lead to deficiencies in various nutrients, which we'll go over in just a bit. Do keep in mind that celiac disease is different from a wheat allergy or a gluten intolerance. If you suspect that you may have celiac disease, some common symptoms to be aware of are things like ongoing diarrhea or constipation, gas, bloating, abdominal pain or cramps, fatigue, skin rashes, lactose intolerance, unintentional weight loss, or anemia. So how do you know if you have celiac disease? One of the most common methods of testing is serological testing or basically just blood work. So your doctor may order some tests that are a tissue transglutamase test, a TTG or an IgA, an antibody test, an endoscopy, where they basically send down a tube with a camera to look inside of your intestines or to take a biopsy. So they'll actually take little pieces of the intestines and then test them to see if the villi is damaged. Now, a really important thing to know about these tests is that you must be eating gluten regularly for them to come back positive. So I actually was tested for this because my dad has celiac disease and I have a lot of GI symptoms. I had the antibody test done, it came back negative, but what I didn't know was that I was supposed to be eating gluten ahead of time. A lot of doctors don't even know that and so they may not tell you. What you should be consuming is the equivalent of two pieces of bread per day for six to eight weeks before you get either the blood work or the biopsy done in order to get a proper diagnosis. One of the biggest concerns with celiac disease is poor nutrient absorption. So because of those damaged intestines, it can lead to deficiencies in calories and nutrients in general, which can lead to weight loss or specific vitamins that are absorbed in the small intestine, such as vitamin B12, other B vitamins like niacin and folate, calcium, vitamin D, iron, magnesium, zinc. And you may also find that you have a general lactose intolerance because lactase, the enzyme for lactose, is made on those surfaces of the villi. And so if they are damaged, then you're not producing those enzymes and you will have difficulty digesting things like milk, yogurt, and some cheeses. How do you treat and manage celiac disease? Currently, there is only one treatment for celiac, and that is a lifelong gluten-free diet. So unfortunately, there's no pills, there's no medical procedures. All you can do is abstain from gluten, and this will give your villi in your intestines a chance to heal. However, even after they've healed and you're able to start absorbing nutrients better and digesting better, you still need to stay gluten-free. Otherwise, when you start eating gluten again, the same damage can occur, and then you're right back to where you started. Unfortunately, this is a pretty tough diet because gluten lurks in a lot of places that you might not expect. So you might already be aware that gluten is in wheat, rye, barley, and malt. However, it kind of sneaks into a lot of different food and sauces and food ingredients, and you can get cross-contamination within a kitchen that you need to watch out for. It's going to be very important to learn to read labels and to distinguish which ingredients have gluten and which do not. Now, when it comes to like packaged foods, you can look for that gluten-free certified label. If it has that, then you're safe, you're good to go. If it doesn't have that, you're gonna need to check the ingredients. Also, you need to look out for oats. 
So oats in and of themselves are not necessarily gluten-free because they're often cross-contaminated from where they are produced. So if you're going to eat oats or oatmeal or a food that uses oats instead of wheat, it must be gluten-free certified. Some other things you need to watch out for that you might not really think about very often are foods like soy sauce, as well as other sauces and marinades and like spice rubs that might go onto meat or maybe on meat that you're purchasing. A lot of times these things are made with wheat. Also meat substitutes, so like vegan or vegetarian meat options may have wheat in them or even natural flavorings could contain gluten. You may not always know from reading the label because they don't always disclose every tiny little thing that goes into it. Then look at the package itself to see if it says gluten-free or has a certified gluten-free label on there. If it doesn't, then it's probably best to avoid because again, we don't want to get any cross-contamination or any gluten if you truly have celiac disease. Some other things to keep in mind when it comes to cross-contamination is eating out and cooking and eating at home. Best practice is to call a restaurant ahead of time or at least look at their menu to see if they have gluten-free options, but also to talk to maybe the chef to find out if they actually separate gluten cooking from gluten-free cooking. If everything gets cooked and baked and mixed into the same places, then you're probably going to be getting gluten cross-contamination, even if the food you're eating, in theory, shouldn't have gluten. The same thing applies to your own home kitchen. So it may be that someone in your family, or maybe you, does not eat gluten, but everyone else eats gluten. So for instance, if all of the same bread goes into the same toaster, you might want to have two separate toasters for your gluten-free bread and your gluten-containing bread. The same would apply with dishes, pots and pans, utensils, make sure that these are always washed very thoroughly after use. And you wanna generally stick with things like glass or things that aren't wood or aren't plastic that can be cut into, because if gluten gets into those little cracks, then when you cook your food, you could end up getting gluten. Another thing you may not think of, but should be aware of in the home is cross-contamination within jars or containers of food. So for instance, if someone in your house grabs a knife, goes into the peanut butter, scoops it out and put it on their bread, and then you use that same knife and put it on your bread, you could get it, be getting cross-contamination. It's definitely more complicated than I can cover in this video, but that's just sort of some of the highlights. But do be aware there may be more foods and cooking practices that you need to be aware of to make sure that you're avoiding gluten. If you are newly diagnosed or still trying to figure out if you have celiac disease, I know this can be a very complicated process and difficult to navigate in the beginning. So if you need some nutrition support going through this, feel free to reach out to me for a free 20 minute consult for nutrition coaching at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com. So I've been there. I know what it's like. I know the difficulties and I'm qualified as a registered dietitian to help walk you through this journey to healing your gut. Also, I have a gluten and dairy-free meal plan on my website. It's a four-week plan with grocery lists, meals, recipes, meal planning tips to help you find healthy foods that are gluten and dairy-free so that you can start to relieve some of those symptoms and find some great recipes to improve your health. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And until the next video, blessings on your gut health and wellness journey.